Good day everyone, welcome back to Medix Mike YouTube channel. Now today we are still going to be looking on nomenclature and if you have not seen the first part of my video on nomenclature, the intro, you have to go look at it. I'll leave the link on the description below so you can go check it out. So please, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please do well to subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. Moving on. We are going to start with a very simple compound here. Now, if you have seen the first part of this video, I want you to take a pause now and try if you can name this compound. Okay, if you have tried that, let's do this together. Now, first of all, remember our first rule we said we should locate the parent chain. And the parent chain is equivalent to the longest chain in an organic compound now what is the longest chain here we can't start counting from chlorine because chlorine is not carbon and remember this is a skeletal representation of organic compounds and if you want to locate the position of carbon it is at the point whereby you have bridges in this skeletal joint of the compound for example at this point we have a carbon atom here we also have a carbon atom right here and we also have a carbon atom right here. Remember the tetravalency rule of carbon needs to be obeyed. So at this very carbon, anywhere there's carbon here, there must be four branch at it, except you have a double bond or a triple bond. Alright, now to find the parent chain here, we are going to be looking for the possible longest carbon chain. It must be continuous. So, starting from this carbon atom here, we're just going to draw the continuous chain that we can find at this point. So, this will be our continuous chain since there's no bridge in this place. And we have five carbon atoms. Counting from here, we have one, two, three, four, five. Remember that the way you number organic compounds when you are naming them, it should give the lowest number to your substituent chain now we have chlorine here attached to a carbon atom but we don't know the number of the carbon atom yet so we are going to number in a way that the lowest number is going to be given to chlorine now imagine we start numbering from this place this will be carbon one carbon two carbon three carbon four. So we'll be having four chloro but is that really the lowest number we can give to chlorine definitely not if we start numbering from this carbon, it will be carbon 1 and carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. Now here will be carbon 2, giving chlorine a lower number than when it was 4 chloro. So the right way to number this compound here will be 1, carbon 1, this is carbon 2, this is carbon 3, this is carbon 4, and this is carbon 5. So we'll be having two chloropentane so we are having two chloropentane since it is five carbon atom and it is a straight chain arcane so for our final answer we'll be having two chloropentane for this compound so we have another compound before us to name and if you observe very well there is a major difference between this compound and the compound we previously named now this compound is not an arcane, it is an arcane because it has not just one double bond, it has three double bond, but any compound that has double bond in it is named as an arcane, A-N-E ending it. So we are going to start by locating where this carbon is in this skeletal organic compound. Remember in our previous example I said that Every skeletal compound has its carbon atom at the part whereby there is bridges. So we'll be having our carbon over here. So one carbon here. There is another carbon here. There is another carbon over here. One here. Another here. And the last part is at this place. We don't need to stress ourselves when looking for the longest continuous chain since this is just a continuous double bond compound and we don't have any branches in it. So we can start naming from either side, either from this part or this part, 
because both carbon one at each place has a double bond in it but i'll prefer we start from this place so this will be carbon one carbon two carbon three carbon four carbon five and carbon six so this is an hexane compound but since we don't have just one double bond it will be a triene now we have to locate the part of this compound where we have our double bond now we have double bond at carbon one we have double bond at carbon three we have double bond at carbon five so that means this compound will be a 135 hexa triene. Why is it hexa? Because it contains six carbon atoms. If you don't know how to assign names to number of carbon atoms, you can still check my previous video so you will see them. So moving on to our next example, we have a compound before us here and this is a cyclo compound. Now, before we name this compound, I want us to take a look at this. Now, this compound belongs to our closed chain compounds, also called our cyclic compounds. Now, they are basically divided into two, which are our aromatic compound, which include our benzene compound and toluene compound or other derivatives of benzene. While for this cycloalkene, they are referred to as alicyclic compounds. They are compounds that don't have a structure of benzene, but they are closed chain compounds. And here we have an example of cycloalkenes, and I want us to have a basic knowledge of this before we name our next compound. So here we have cyclobutane because it is four carbon atom. We have cyclopentane, five carbon atom, cyclohexane, six carbon atom. Okay, back to our question here. We are told to give the IUPAC name of the compound. Now, with the basic knowledge you have on cyclo compounds, go ahead and try if you can get the name of this compound correctly. Okay, having done that, let's name this compound together. Now, first of all, we have to count out the number of carbon in this cyclo compound. Now, this is one carbon here. 2 carbon at this point, 3 carbon here, 4 carbon here, and 5 carbon here. Let me just highlight that. So we have a carbon atom right here. We have carbon atom right here, right here, here, and here. And we have our branches at this carbon and this carbon. Now we are going to number the carbon, giving the lowest number to our branch as we seen in our example one now if we start naming from this part this is definitely our carbon one if we go this way it will mean that this will be carbon one carbon two carbon three carbon four and carbon five giving five to our methyl group this is a methyl group a methyl group is one hydrogen atom lower than the methane compound now so We'll be having our carbon one here and here will be carbon five which is definitely not correct according to the iupac rules according to iupac rules we are supposed to give the lowest numbering to our carbon chain so having carbon one here it would be highly sensible to put our carbon two here giving the lowest branch number to both of our substituents so here we'll be having carbon three following line here we'll be having carbon 4 and carbon 5. So hence we'll be having 1 chloro and 2 methyl. Now remember that when given the continuous name for this compound, it is highly compulsory that we must add the cyclo to the name. So we'll be having 1 chloro, 2 methyl, cyclopentane, since it is 5 carbon atom. So there we go. The name of the compound will be 1 chloro 2 methyclopentane. Now for our next example which we have here, it's a diol compound and it's the same rules for naming 
our previous compound that we are still going to apply here. So first of all, we need to locate the position of our carbon atom. And the position of our carbon atom is the point at this skeletal structure where there are bridges. What do I mean? So at this point, we have our first carbon atom. This point, we have another carbon atom. And this point, we have the last carbon atom. So the next step is to number our carbon atom. And remember that numbering our carbon atoms is in such a way that the two substituent branch will, branches will have the lowest number of carbon attached. Now, what do I mean? If we start numbering from this place, this will be 1, 2, 3. Thereby, these two substituent branches will have 2 and 3. But if we start from this part or this carbon, we'll be having 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, our substituent branches, instead of having 2 and 3, will be having 1 and 2. So that is the correct way of numbering. So this will be 1, this will be 2, and this will be 3. Okay. So since it is 3 carbon atoms, we will be having propane. But when considering our substituent branches, which is dial, this is not an arcane group, but an R canal group. So we'll be having proper 1, 2, diol. So the correct name for this compound is proper 1, 2, diol. So it is either your name in the compound as proper 1, 2, diol or 1, 2, propane, diol. All right, everyone. So before I go today, I'll be leaving you guys with this compound. So try and name it. Leave your answer in the comment section. If you have not subscribed, please ensure to subscribe. God bless you.